Since the death of Alanon, life in the Four Lands has drastically changed. Yet Par Olmsford still has some power of the Wish Song, and when a message from the ancient druid Alanon reaches him, Par is ordered to recover the long lost sword of Shannara, the glory that once was the Four Lands. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host Liam, aka Hembar, and today I'll be doing a spoiler free review of Terry Brooks's The Science of Shannara. The Science of Shannara is a 1990 novel in book one in The Heritage of Shannara, which is a tetralogy by Terry Brooks, of course, and it is a sequel series to the original Shannara trilogy. This one takes place, um, well, years after Wish Song of Shannara, and it starts with Alanon, a shade, visiting an unnamed old man. So we have Par Olmsford of Shady Vale, who is in the city of Varfleet, which is uh, it kind of comes off as like a cozy city as opposed to like a fantasy city like Lankmar uh, or something like that. And we, he is with his brother Cole, uh, who actually himself sees it more like Lankmar. So this is giving us a, a good example of, well, personality and how people see things differently. Um, they're there technically to share their family stories. Um, this doesn't go exactly as planned, of course, as... Magic is not really allowed, and Par does have some capabilities with the Wish Song magic, um, like his ancestor did in, um, well, the Wish Song of Shannara. Um, and Par looks more elven, even, um, which is probably why he has Wish Song magic, right? Where Cole doesn't really look elven at all. So Rin, the cousin of the brothers, uh, comes in later. She is wild and, well, she has similar dreams to, to Par. And Walker Bo, another one of the company. He is an uncle and an outsider who also has magic. For a hundred years, the Federation has ruled the four lands. They don't like magic or elves. Though the elves have disappeared from the Westland, the dwarves um, are, well, they're beaten into submission by this Federation. The gnomes have capitulated after that, and only the trolls are independent now. The Sword of Shannara and the Elfstones have disappeared, and this story involves, well, Alanon's shade, uh, kind of trying to give the party guidance on where to get those things so they can, you know, help save the four lands. So there is no dark lord this time, but an evil government. And this is not a standalone um, like the first three are. So its ending is rather dark um, since there is much to be resolved still. And it is definitely the first book in a series as well where there's not a ton, I, I would say, that happens. Um, all things considered, it's not bad. Um, it's kind of what I, I don't want to call it generic fantasy. It's like, it's definitely that tradition that Brooks started. That is a, originally an imitation of Tolkien and later tries to become its own thing. And it's, it's not terrible. Uh, it's not all that great, uh, in my opinion, but it's really not bad either. Um, so I read this one like three months ago and I still haven't gotten to the second book. So I might show you just how interested I am, but it was not bad, and I definitely will be finishing this series. So, um, I haven't reviewed any of the other previous Shannara books. I read those all before I started my channel. So, it was kind of nice, though, to be back in Shannara after so long. But, at the same time, it's just... I don't know, it's still not as good as Elfstone. Elfstone's is still the best one that I've read, still. Uh, so, hopefully, one of these books in this series can outdo Elfstone's. That'd be really nice. But, it's been Liam Williams Lyceum. I'll catch you next time.